Hello and welcome to the Comlux Instant Review. Please visit comluxflashcards.com for complete Comlux prep resources as you prepare for the Comlux board exam. Let's review a case study. An elderly diabetic steroid dependent bronchospastic woman has had an ileocolectomy for a perforated cecum and she is recovering well in the ICU. She's intubated on triple antibiotics and a rapid steroid taper and she's making adequate urine on renal dose dopamine. On post-operative day 2, she develops a fever of 102.5, hypotension, lethargy, laboratory values remarkable for hypoglycemia and hyperkalemia. What is the most likely diagnosis in this case? Is it a sepsis, hypovolemia, adrenal insufficiency, acute tubular necrosis, or is it diabetic ketoacidosis? Well, you know, this answer here is going to be adrenal insufficiency. Acute adrenal insufficiency is classically manifested as changing mental status, increased temperature, cardiovascular collapse, and patients can also have hypoglycemia and hyperkalemia. The diagnosis is difficult to make and it requires high, a high index of suspicion. Um, it clinically um, is similar to sepsis. However, sepsis is generally associated with hyperglycemia and no significant change in potassium. The treatment for a adrenal crisis is hydrocortisone, 100 milligrams intravenously, volume resuscitation, and other supportive measures. Then hydrocortisone, 200 to 400 milligrams, is administered over the next 24 hours, followed by a taper of steroid as tolerated. So really, uh, this is a very high yield topic, likely to see it you know, in the hospital wards as well. Let's review another board review case. Um, signs and symptoms of hemolytic transfusion reactions include all of the following except fever, hypertension, oligouria, abnormal bleeding, heat, and pain at the transfusion site. So which of the following are signs and symptoms of transfusion reactions? And the question is asking you, from the choices I just stated, which of the following are not one of the choices? Well, the answer is going to be hypertension. Allergic and febrile reactions occur in about 1% of all transfusions. Uh, hemolytic transfusion reactions are much less common, 0.2% with fatal reactions in um, you know, 1 in 100,000 transfusions. Hemolytic transfusion reactions are due to the reaction of recipient antibodies against transfused antigens. These reactions can be both immediate and delayed. And symptoms of a hemolytic transfusion reaction includes fevers, chills, pain at the site of the infusion, as well as respiratory distress, anxiety, hypotension, and oligouria. During surgery, a hemolytic transfusion reaction can manifest as abnormal bleeding. So the answer is hypertension. You know, fever, oligouria, abnormal bleeding, heat, and pain at the transfusion site all occur um, with the hemolytic transfusion reactions. Let's review another case. A patient is suspected of having a hemolytic transfusion reaction uh, should be treated with all of the following except placement of a Foley catheter, fluid resuscitation, um, bicarbonate infusion, steroids, or mannitol. The answer here is going to be steroids. Um, patients should not be receiving steroids, especially if they are developing a hemolytic transfusion reaction. The hemolytic transfusion reactions lead to hypotension and oligouria. The increased hemoglobin in the plasma will be cleared by the kidneys, leading to hemoglobinuria. And placement of an indwelling catheter with subsequent administration of uh, oligouria and hemoglobinuria not only confirms uh, the diagnosis of a transfusion reaction, but it's useful in monitoring the corrective therapy for a transfusion reaction. So definitely consider putting in a Foley. Treatment begins with discontinuation of the transfusion, followed by aggressive fluid resuscitation, and also um, increased um, monitoring of the uh, urine output and inducing a diuresis through aggressive fluid resuscitation and osmotic diuresis is also important to clear the hemolyzed red cell membranes which can actually collect in the glomeruli leading to renal damage. Understand that alkalization of the urine helps prevent hemoglobin clumping together and renal damage. Steroids do not play a role in hemolytic transfusion reactions and so that's key. Alright, well that was a quick overview of some of the high yield concepts uh, for the complex surgical section. 
please visit comlexflashcards.com for complete board review material and subscribe to our blog. That's www.comlexflashcards.com. Good luck in your preparation.